What is up guys? Rick Kak is here. Thank you so much for stopping by and today we are going to be going over the best PvP scout rifle in Destiny 2 that absolutely no one is using. Seriously, I use this thing a ton in Iron Banner and even some normal Crucible and you're going to be seeing a ton of that in the background gameplay and I saw a grand total of zero zero other people using this weapon, which I think is crazy for just how powerful this thing actually is. It's one of PvP's best kept secrets, but to no fault of its own. This is a very rare and very kind of not understood combination of perks and a certain weapon, and a lot of people just don't know about this. In fact, when I was using it and I was talking to the people I was playing with, they actually were saying, oh wait, I might have had that and deleted it. Like people just don't know about what exactly is going on here. So that's the purpose of this video to let you guys know about this because scout rifles are in right now. Scout rifles are being used heavily in PVP for two reasons. Number one, they've carved themselves a little bit more of a place within the meta due to some nerfs to some other gun types with the most recent sandbox update. But number two, because everyone's trying to get the Randy's throwing knife PVP ritual weapon. Now that weapon probably is like arguably the best scout rifle for PVP in the entire game. But you need 450 scout rifle kills to get it. So you might as well be using the second most or another incredibly powerful scout rifle to get the Randy's and that's where I think this weapon comes into play. So let's talk about this. It is the No Feelings Legendary Energy Scout Rifle, and this is acquired from the Scourge of the Past raid. Now, I know you're thinking, oh, Rick, another raid weapon. I, I can't do raids. Like, I, I don't do raids. What does this guy think I am? Like, I can just get a six-man group like that. But I'm telling you guys, I am telling you guys, the older raids are definitely more achievable than you may think. Part of the reason for that is, well, you're a much higher light level than you were previously, so you are just going to be stomping through enemies and really making it harder to die as well going through those activities. But also, a lot of really hardcore players are going out there and trying to get the year two versions of the raid mods. So, fallen armaments, fallen barrier, and stuff that drops, those mods that drop with the Scourge of the Past, there's a ton of hardcore players that have a group of four and they just grab two random people from LFG and they don't care if you have only done it once or you know what you're doing because you watched a guide like my complete raid guide, just saying. But seriously, people are just speeding through those to get those mods so you actually have a pretty decent chance to tag along. LFG is not a nice place, but you only need one group to work out. But that's kind of aside, what is so special about this particular gun? Well, it's because this is the only scout rifle in the entire game that can get the perk Boxed Breathing. This perk only spawns otherwise on sniper rifles and linear fusion rifles. So, what does this perk do? Well, the description reads, Aiming this weapon for a short period without firing grants bonus range and precision damage that resets after firing or exiting zoom. So, in practice, it works like this. I've got my test dummy here in a private match and normally I'm gonna do 55 damage for a headshot with this scout rifle. And that's gonna be the same for all 180 rounds per minute scouts. That's the archetype that the no feelings belongs to. And by the way, I'm gonna do 35 damage for a body shot. But if I aim down sights, and you'll actually see a little bit of a visible effect on your weapon occur, and you're gonna have the little icon pop up on the side that box breathing is active, and then if I shoot my dummy in the head, I get 89 damage. And if we turn to math, that works out to be a 62% damage bonus for aiming down sights for a little bit. Now, that means that you can do an 89 damage box breathing headshot, and follow that up with two 55 damage normal headshots, because remember, box breathing is gonna go away after one shot, and that equals exactly 199 damage, and that means you're turning this normally four-shot kill scout rifle into a three-shot kill. 
Now, anytime you can do that, you can kind of break a weapon archetype. You can kill one shot faster than a weapon is supposed to. You get to some dangerous, dangerous territories. In fact, to put that into perspective for how fast of a time to kill that is, I mean, one of the best time to kills in the game right now is a three tap from a 150 hand cannon. Like for example, the spare rations. Well, this is shooting even faster at 180. In fact, if you get a three tap with this, it's the same time to kill as the pre-nerf Not Forgotten when it was capable of a three shot kill at 180. And Bungie said, yeah, that's absurd. We need to actually nerf that and bring it down to a 150 to make it more reasonable. Well, this is still doing that much damage. Now, of course, this takes a little bit more setup than the Not Forgotten pre-nerf, but it does illustrate just how severe the time to kill is. And this time to kill blows away the other non-Randy's scout rifles in the game. This is going to kill faster than a Mida, faster than the Jade Rabbit, all of that stuff. Now, some more information to help with the lingering questions you guys may have. Uh, firstly, remember, it's only a precision damage bonus for box breathing. As you can see, if I get the buff and then I shoot the body, it's still doing the normal 35 damage. That's very important. Also, even with extremely low resilience, we weren't able to get a headshot with box breathing, plus a normal headshot, plus a body shot. So it does need to be all three headshots for 99% of the time you're gonna get a kill for that. Also, again, for those curious, I did take it into PVE and there it still works. And I did a 2,563 damage box breathing shot. And then the follow-up non-box breathing shot was 1,583. And that works out to exactly the same amount of buff as the PVP effect. And that is a 62% damage bonus. Now, just to kind of grasp how big of a damage bonus 62% is, that's almost the same as multi-kill clip times three. But again, you just need to aim down sights. You don't need to kill three people. You don't need to get a triple kill. You need to aim down sights for a bit. So let's talk about this weapon's performance in PvP, because that's where it's most at home. Like in PvE, yes, you get that damage bonus, but you're missing out on so much overall damage by, by not shooting. But in PvP, like you, you really do want to go for that optimum time to kill. And in fact, without that, this weapon kills very slowly. Getting four headshots with a 180 scout archetype is pretty darn brutal, especially since like the Mida kills in four shots as well and shoots faster. Like this archetype is kind of, actually not kind of, it's very much struggling, the 180s. So literally it's relying on box breathing to get this phenomenal time to kill and without it, it's not great. So you really do have to go out of your way to facilitate this optimal time to kill. The way you're going to play has to change with this weapon. And so like for the medium range maps, probably something like the Mida is going to be better or even the faster firing Black Scorpion archetype is going to be better because you really do have to find the long sight lines and you have to aim down sights before you engage enemies. Now you can aim down sights like behind cover and then peek out of cover and then start engaging. And if you can open an attack with a 90 damage headshot, most people like they can't compete with that. Your time to kill will stomp them. Also, something that is very helpful is that box breathing will actually constantly reapply itself. So you can aim down sights, get box breathing, engage an enemy, pop, 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 three shot kill, fantastic. And then just stay aiming down sights. And that is actually going to reapply box breathing. Look for that little glow to your gun. And then you can engage the next enemy or you can engage that first enemy. And then if there is a second enemy already nearby, already that sees you, you can kind of just go behind cover, still aiming down sights, get box breathing to reapply and come out and engage that next enemy. And all of this does pair very nicely with the other perk I do have for this weapon. And I think this would be like the best other perk you're looking to pair it with. And that is full auto. Full auto means that I can hold the trigger and the gun is just gonna fire at the absolute optimal 180 rounds per minute rate of fire every single time. Like there's no human error. You take that completely out of the equation and you just get that perfect optimal time to kill every time. 
It's also very helpful because this weapon is like unreal and frankly feels a little bit unbeatable when you set it up right, but because of how you have to set it up, things can go awry pretty quickly. There was definitely a few times when using this gun where I'd be aiming down sights, laning people, and then I would just die to a shotgun from a guy that snuck up on me. Like, you don't have radar when you're aiming down sights, and you definitely do get tunnel vision with this weapon. In fact, like, that's how you have to use box breathing, is just very tunnel vision oriented, looking down that sight line. Uh, so, yeah, you are gonna get snuck up on, and so having full auto can actually get you out of some sticky scenarios. Someone comes closer than you would imagine, it actually happened quite a bit where I was aiming down a lane and someone would come out in that lane but much closer to me and I would still get off that 90 damage headshot but then after that, the enemy is extremely weak. You can aim out of sights and you can just hip fire them down with this scout rifle, again, especially if it's in full auto, that's gonna help, or switch to your shotgun. Guess what, if they've already taken 90 damage for a headshot, you can kill them with your shotgun really far away, way sooner than they're trying to get their one shot kill with their shotgun on you, that's for sure. Another great feature about this weapon is that it's legendary, and people kind of often overlook this, but if you're using something like the Mida, like the Jade Rabbit, well, you can't use the Wardcliffe Coil. You can't use the Thunderlord. You can't use a lot of other great exotic options, but with this, you can. Oh, and one last thing about this weapon, it's a great gun for invading in Gambit, because as you can imagine, it's pretty easy to set up those insane box breathing time to kills when you can see through walls, so yeah. But guys, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed, found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing this video. If you guys wanna see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you wanna get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis. That's linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video, and as always, have a good day.